All right, hello everyone, uh, and thanks for coming to the accessibility certification discussion. I am Leah Broshu of Nels. I'm the accessible publishing and resources coordinator and summit coordinator, as you may have guessed by now. Um, today, well, I'll be moderating this panel. We're going to have about a 30 to 40 minute panel on accessibility certification, followed by 10 to 20 minutes of Q&A. Um, we'll talk about some of the key developments and challenges happening around accessibility certification. So we're going to start off with a round of introductions um, in the you know, interest of time. You can just be the brief one, you know, your name, organization, that kind of thing. And don't forget to everyone who's here that full bios can be found on accessible, the Accessible Publishing website. Uh, so I'm just going to go in the order that I see people on my screen. So that's Jessica first. Jessica, can you introduce yourself? Yes, I can. Thank you, Leah. Uh, my name is Jessica Albert. I work at ACW Press, which is a trade publisher here in Toronto that publishes a variety of different uh, types of content. And I head up our digital, all digital efforts. So that's accessibility, ebooks, metadata, audiobook distribution, ebook distribution. Excellent. Thank you so much. And Elizabeth? Hi, um, I'm Elizabeth. I'm a technology specialist at eBound, and I actually work with uh, Benetech on the eBound Benetech certification project, and I am also trained as a Benetech certifier. Thank you so much. Uh, Charles? Hello, everyone. Charles Lapierre, he slash him. Uh, I'm the principal accessibility standards and technical lead and our global certified accessible program here at Benetech. And I also am on a number of different uh, W3C standards bodies working on all of this. Thanks. Excellent. Um, so I'm just getting a message from a different room. Um, oh, my apologies. Sorry about that. Apparently, people will think I'm important. Um, I'll do myself next. Thank you, Charles. I'm Leah Brochure, as I said, I'm with Nels. I'm also working um, on the on the eBound pre Benetech pre-certification certification projects, which has been really interesting. Um, so that's kind of my certification zone. Um, I will have Lee next. Hi, I'm Lee Nash. I'm the publisher with Invisible Publishing. We're a small not-for-profit. Uh, literary publisher based out in Prince Edward County, Ontario. Um, I make all Invisible's ebooks, yay! Um, and I've been making them. I've been making ebooks for various small presses since 2011. That's awesome. And Daniela, last but not least. Hi everyone. My name is Daniela Levy Pinto, and I am the manager of Nels. And you all know what Nels is doing in uh, in this space. <laughs> Yeah. We have heard. Um, all right, thank you so much, everyone. Now let's, we can just dive into the questions because we've got a bunch of interesting ones. So first up, um, I wanna hear the publisher perspective. We've got a lot of publishers in this room, I think, uh, and in addition to you too. Um, so the first question, and we'll throw it to Lee first. Um, what were the biggest challenges you came up against when you were working towards certification? Um, well, I, I first want to give a shout out to Nels because I think we were really well prepared for it in a way because we'd done we'd undertaken the Nels audits um, of our ebooks in the past and that was sort of a good training ground <laughs> um, to get to the certification process. Um, but for me, the biggest challenges were there was still a lot to learn. Um, I you know, it's, I find it hard to stay on top of things. And, you know, for a long time, I wasn't, I had no idea how area worked, um, for example. And so it was a bit of a learning curve to get up to speed on those things and to see how and why um, they fit together with, you know, the stuff I did know about making ebooks. <laughs> um, we're also a very lean operation, both financially and human resources wise. Um, so timing is, you know, the timing to actually um, get the work done and to go back and revisit. Um, I, I wanted to do a good job. <laughs> so finding the time to do that um, is always a challenge, I think, for anyone taking on additional projects in this industry. Yeah, I think that's a, that can be said for a lot of publishers, a lot in Canada, for sure. Um, Jessica, do you have anything to add? 
Uh, yeah, that those were all challenges that I faced as well. Um, I felt like when I started the certification process with Benetech that I was pretty informed on the technical side of what I needed to do in our eBooks. And I felt like I was making accessible eBooks when um, I started the certification, but there were still so many things that I learned from Benetech and Charles. So it was it's the information on best practices, maybe not um, like the information is out there. It's just you don't know what to look for if you don't know you have to look for it. Um, so I think I did a good job of like laying a foundation for myself, but I really did need um, the feedback from the experts uh, more so than I even thought I would. Uh, and the other challenge that I ran into was just testing a variety of content. So uh, as I mentioned, ECW is a pretty varied publisher. We do a lot of different types of books. Um, and we'll just take on a new a new type of book altogether uh, every season. So we really wanted to give Benetech a good range of our content because it is so varied. Um, and that made it difficult because our second book had features that were totally different from our first book. So the things we learned in the first book were when we did the first book were great, but they didn't necessarily all match what we would then have to do in the second book. So um, it was really great to have the, the breadth of the information that we got in the end, but I think it, it took me, it took us a little more work than we thought. We thought after the second book we would breeze through, but we were encountering things that we didn't necessarily encounter in the first two books or the first book. Oh, so you're making everybody work hard. Got to balance it out. Um, that's excellent. Uh, yeah, I think I think that speaks to a lot of the challenges, so I appreciate that. Um, I'll have another question for, for, for the both of you, and then we'll move to other people, but and I'll go back to Jessica first. Was the process worthwhile? It sounds like it was, but I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah, I mean, for the same reasons I why it was challenging is why it was worthwhile. Um, and on top of that, one of the challenges that, that is very difficult, especially, as Lee said, for publishers who don't have a, a lot of human resources to put into um this this topic it's a, it's a large topic and it's it's difficult to keep up with um and one of the most worthwhile parts of um, the certification process is that once you're certified you, you benetech um will then send you all their technical bulletins they'll keep you in the loop of what has changed and what best practices um are changing and it changes may, way more than you might think like the dynamism of the, of how um how much has it i've had to incorporate since we were certified about a year ago um, there's been quite a lot. Um, and I, I forgot to mention in my introduction, I also have worked with eBound and Benetech as a certifier. Um, so I got to sort of see the behind the scenes of how these things, um, how the best practices are changing and what makes it into Charles's technical bulletins that he sends his publishers. And just the knowledge that you don't have to like have your finger on the pulse of the uh, accessible publishing best practices as much uh, as you otherwise would have because Benetech is doing that heavy lifting for you. And all of their information is vetted by the experts experts in the field. Um, so that was one major reason why it, it was super worthwhile. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, Lee, do you have anything to add? Yeah, you, you just reminded me, Jessica, that there was a, a change, a practice changed in between two of our EPUBs. I was like, why? Why was this not flagged for me <laughs> in the previous version? Um, just to speak to the speed with which things do shift. Um, I, it was totally, it was really cool to learn. <laughs> I like learning new things, um, but it was also, it gave me a better sense of how um, to put the books together and it made me it's made me more thoughtful about the publishing process in general i think um in terms of how we can present content um to our readers and and you know thinking through the ways in which you know that's sort of extended out now to our website and sort of other technical practices that we work on as a team um which has been really nice to see it's benefiting us in lots of ways oh, that's perfect yeah um it's great when it kind of has a ripple effect across other situations. Um, I think now I'm going to turn to uh, the, which I think you kind of starts to allude to, you know, improving your website and that kind of thing. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about the business case for certification. And uh, I think maybe I will go to Charles first. Sure. I have uh, actually four Four points to bring up on, on this specific uh, question. Um, according to Yale University research, over 20% of the population has dyslexia. 
so this is a huge audience uh, not to ignore. Uh, I promise you that if a person can't read your book, they're, they're not going to buy it, right? Print disabled readers look for accessible content that they can read uh, in their preferred way. And uh, if your books aren't accessible to them, then they're going to have to shop elsewhere. Uh, point two, that uh, for those in the higher ed education markets, colleges, uh, universities are starting to add accessibility requirements for classroom content. And depending on your publisher's location, producing accessible books might be a legal obligation. Uh, think about the European Accessibility Act, uh, you know, that was talked about this morning. If you want to sell your books in Europe, you're going to have to make them accessible. Um, third point is producing accessible ebooks helps uh, publishers reach more readers all um, and sends a signal to your readers that you're invested in their experience and want to produce materials that anyone can use because as uh, Christina mentioned, if you're creating an accessible book, it's not just for the disabled, it's for everyone. It makes the better reading experience. And my final point is that uh, the EPUB's accessibility metadata uh, is starting to be highlighted in bookstores uh, such as Vitalsource and Bookshelf, uh, and uh, book uh, uh, Vitalsource Bookshelf or Red and Redshelf. Uh, so having your books uh, being accessible and have that metadata in there will help you sell your books to more people when they start promoting uh, this. Um, and I think there's one, uh, Goose Lane actually in Canada, who, who the publisher who just got certified, they're actually putting our gold seal, um, you know, GCA certified right on the cover page. Uh, so that is just awesome. And again, great marketing materials to help, you know, to help uh, sell your books. So thanks. Yeah, that does make a lot of sense. Um, I think Jessica had some input on this one. Yeah, and I mean, it's more, it's like anecdotal proof of exactly what Charles is saying, which is that um, we, we, we do at ECW, we do some corporate projects. Um, so we've started creating materials at ECW to sort of help us pitch our accessible formats to our corporate clients, just so that they understood the value add um, that of what the audience, what audience they're going to reach, how it's going to increase their um, the number of people who can access the book. For example, we did a book with a bank, and they wanted to make sure that every employee at the bank could access their content in some way. And we were the only publisher that they were talking to that could guarantee that. So we got that client because. We, we have accessible formats. And we've seen that trickle down into our regular trade publishing as well. Um, conscientious, conscientious authors want to, to have their book have as wide a reach as possible. They want to know that anyone who wants to read their book is going to be able to and have a good experience with it. Um, so we're, we, we've created materials and brought that into our pitch during acquisition when we're trying to attract authors and it has been effective. That does make a lot of sense. Um... Thank you for sharing that. Um, Daniela, I'm curious if you can talk to the business case a little bit. Yes, um, to complement uh, what has been already stated, I think uh, there's also the reputational piece. Charles alluded to this a little bit when um, he was talking about uh, publishers caring and taking users' needs into account. Uh, but the reputation is important um, also to build trust among the readers. Um, and also another point, uh, absolutely some, um, some publishers uh, and, and some systems are beginning to expose metadata, but I think um, certification with partial use of metadata, like uh, we need to do something. I, I know we're not talking about the metadata, but I think um, it is super important to ensure, uh, I don't know if uh, perhaps through the certification uh, uh, bodies, some you know, some um, something can be done collectively to push uh, for metadata to be exposed. Otherwise, um, how are these books going to be discoverable? And uh, Charles already said it, but Europe. If you want to sell the content in Europe, you will have uh, to do this, and certification in this case would be indispensable um, as part of the business case. Definitely. Yeah, I think <clears throat> some, some of us might have to stop by the uh, metadata working session tomorrow. 
Um, Elizabeth, do you want to speak to the business case a little bit, like kind of the e-bound side? Yeah, sure. Um, I think a lot of points have been covered, but I just kind of wanted to go back to something that Jessica said earlier, just um, not like you have Benetech to rely on to help you keep you up to date. And I think that the certification kind of creates a community of, uh, amongst publishers. You have resources, you can talk to other publishers about their experiences. So you're not just alone in trying to create accessible EPUB, um, especially when the Canadian government came out with the five-year accessibility plan. Like it definitely helps to have guidelines and goals in place and support within the Canadian publishing community. Um, one thing we definitely noticed is that as we move into digital marketplace with COVID and the pandemic uh, and more purchases and loans are happening, that the certification helps differentiate good quality ebooks because they um, are prone to fewer errors and they have cleaner features and you know like what you're getting. Um, yeah, so that's all I say. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, my next question. So I think we've been focusing a lot on you know the Benetech certification, but I want to open it up to like more general certification. And I'm going to start with Daniela. Um, the there's an alternate approach of individual file certification, which is which you know it's kind of what LIA is doing. Like they do look at every each and every single book. Um, do you want to speak to the, like kind of the, the benefits of that approach? Um, and I'll ask Charles after, but yeah, I just want to talk sure. about if there's space for individual file certification. Sure. I think it's it's an important question. Um, it, it would ideally, in my mind, uh, we would have two uh, types of the two types of certification. The workflows is important for all the reasons that have been mentioned. Um, but we've, I think, or a lot of us have known about um, either companies that have been certified, uh, ebook producers or uh, publishers, and something falling short on the file, either images with uh, incomplete descriptions or something that is not uh, reflected in, in the certification. So um, in addition to this, uh, which of course is uh, super important to the users, um, knowing the specific um, that the specific features they need would be present um, individual certification would uh, give a lot of flexibility in the Canadian context especially with so many independent publishers with different um, uh, capabilities um, it would it would be useful for that uh, and Maybe if uh, something changes, is a practice. If a practice practice changes, you know it doesn't affect um, the whole the whole publisher. Like uh, there's value in assessing and in noting uh, individual files. So I, uh, if a publisher is is not certified, but there's a need for files, I do see um, possibilities and situations for uh, individual certification. I think I'll leave it at that for now. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Dana. And yeah, Charles, I'd love to hear. I'm sure you've thought about this. <laughs> oh, definitely. <clears throat> yeah. Part of our certification program, we start off with individual files, right? Uh, but we're trying to certify their the publisher workflow. And that's why we're, we want to see like two or three books coming off. And then, yeah, we know that the, the publisher is doing the right thing because to scale this, it, it's just, we can't you know, if your publisher is doing like, like 1500 books a year and I have to look at each one and it takes me, you know, three, two, three hours to do that. Like it just, I, we can't do it. Like it's going to take, you know, just an incredible amount of money and time to do that. So that's why we have to do, you know, more of the, the workflow and, but we do do spot checks and, uh, you know, uh, Jessica's just gone through the certification uh, spot check, uh, you know, recertification and, you know, there's still issues like we still find the issues we help we work with you and and we get that uh, you know because things change workflows change and you you're making new content so yeah that's uh you know so we ha there can be a place especially for small one-offs uh we do that um a friends and family type thing for certain publishers don't have a lot of money and we just do like a high high level and we tell you yeah this is you know what you're doing right and wrong and you know um but uh, you know, folks like uh, Lilia there in um, in Italy, they're doing it book by book, 
right? I, I just, if, which isn't great, but I just, uh, for scaling, it's just, uh, can't, you know, it's just a non-starter for most, uh, most public, like most folks that are trying to do a type of certification like this. Um, so that, anyway, that's my two, two cents on that. Thank you. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense too. Your sense makes sense. Um, so I think I want to ask Elizabeth now about, so we've been talking to, you know, to Jessica and Lee. So you guys are both doing in-house ebook production, but there's a whole other piece of the pie, which is what I think something like 70% of Canadian publishers are doing, which is outsourcing the production of their work. Um, so that kind of comes with its whole own set of challenges when it's not you just being like, okay, I'll just change these, these items in my workflow. So having worked, you know, with a bunch of publishers in the Benetech certification, eBound certification program, um, what, how are people, are you seeing people deal with that in different ways or how is the, how are people working with their outsourcers, especially if they're not Benetech certified outsourcers? Yeah, definitely. So we've had um, many publishers in the program that have outsourced their work. Um, so first off, there are vendors out there that are Benetech certified, so they would understand the requirements and they're familiar with the standard. But if you do work with a vendor that is not certified, it's definitely achievable. It just comes down to communication, um, making your expectations up front in terms of the quality of the work that you expect from them. And it also helps to have someone in-house who will review the work coming in from the vendors to make sure that they're meeting those standards. Um, it also, you can share the reports that you receive from Benetech that outlines exactly what needs to be changed directly with the vendors so they know what they need to do. And it's just like communicating that these changes will be applied to all e new EPUBs going forward. Um, but it's definitely doable. I've seen a lot of publishers that get certified with outsourcing their ebook production. Excellent. Thank you so much. And sorry, I just sent you a message, Elizabeth, by accident. It was to the wrong person. I apologize. Um, yeah, we've worked with a lot of people who are outsourcing as well. And we've seen some people send kind of our report to their outsourcer and they like commented on each thing they're like oh we'll do this from now on oh we'll do this from now on oh we'll do and which I was like oh amazing and then other people are a little bit harder to work with so yeah it's, it's a it's an interesting challenge itself um so my my last question I think before we turn to Q&A um there's two there's two to choose from so we'll see what happens I'm going to pick random um let's talk about what are the well, no, how sustainable is certification? That's something I really want to ask about. And I'm going to start with Lee, because you, you know, you've said that you're, you're the one, you're the champion of ebook production at your place. So what happens, you know, to Invisible Publishing if, without Lee Nash? Um, well, I don't want to get hit by a bus. So if you can all <laughs> knock on wood for me, that would be great. <laughs> great start. Um, we do have other people in house who who know the basics of ebook production so we're very big here anyway at no one should be indispensable which i think is generally good life advice um so you know if it ever came down to, to outsourcing and that kind of thing you know shifts in workflow happen um all the time but for us the biggest piece is maintain like we want to maintain it we want to do a good job we want to keep meeting the standards and um so revisiting older ebooks again it's the, the maintenance of that backlist that to me stands out as the big piece going forward um as standards change um again the the documentation that benetech sends out is fantastic um it's just a matter of of building now um into our own workflows the time to keep you know to keep those books updated we're, we're a relatively small operation, so yeah. <laughs> fingers crossed it'll take a while before it becomes problematic. But again, um, there's all sorts of maintenance things that we do anyway with our metadata. Um, so it's, it's a matter of just taking those practices going forward, but um, we'll see. Stay tuned. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Um, Jessica, what, how do you feel about the sustainability of, of workflow certification? Yeah, Lee brought up really great points. Um, just to add to that, uh, it the the great thing about having Benetech as a partner is that in the end, it actually does save you time because you don't have to do 
the work. I mean, if you're interested in accessible publishing, but you're not certified, you still have to keep up with best practices. You have to do it on your own uh, and you have to um, do the research yourself. So in that way, it saves us time to be certified. It may have taken us more time up front, but as time goes on, it will save us more and more time um, because we have Benetech helping us keep keep up with, like keep to the standard. Um, and doing the annual review that Charles mentioned, I owe him an email about that, but it's been a busy, busy week. Uh, that, it, that really does help you to, to do a real live test of have you been keeping up with those best practices and those standards. So it is difficult to continue to make changes to your, um, like to your production workflow. Uh, you, you do have to be conscious of it a lot. Uh, and that is that can be a difficult thing for a small company to do. And even for a large conversion house, because the larger you are, the, the more diversified you are, the harder it is gonna to be to, to keep up with the standards as well. So it's hard for everyone in the, in the chain, but if you're doing accessible publishing at all, those things still apply. You just now have support structure to deal with them. That makes a lot of sense. Um, do any of the other panelists wanna to speak to the sustainability of certification model? Good on that front? Just, no problem. Just oh. do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the, so the, the next, I think, good question that can go to anyone, um, and maybe I'll start with Charles on this one. What are the biggest challenges that you're anticipating in this kind of area of work? Um, I, I was thinking about this and uh, I think worldwide it's getting, you know, countries to like they, the, I forget the panelists that said that to get the country to, you know, to adopt accessibility and to stand behind and, you know, it's not rocket science to create an accessible EPUB book. So, you know, we're doing it now. We know what you have to do. It's just a matter of putting in the time and money to, to do the right thing. And if you put it in your workflow, then, you know, the, the only harder part is those accessible image descriptions. Um, other than that, everything else should be just plug and play and just crank out a new, another accessible book. And if you don't do a lot of images, you only have to deal with the like the cover page, uh, you know, and and there we have a template that you could probably automate as well because it's the the title, you know, cover colon title, author, edited by whatever, you know. There's a there's a template for that. So, I, I think the biggest thing is you know the adoption and and maybe the little publishers, uh, the bigger publishers have the money to do it. So it's the little publishers finding, you know, but you know with things like the Heritage Foundation, you know, the funding there, uh, which is awesome and shows how great Canada is uh, supporting all of these publishers and making accessible books. Uh, they get it, you know, and uh, so definitely applaud Canada for doing that. My, you know, I'm born and raised myself. I'm here now in the US, but uh, yeah, from uh, Ontario, uh, I went to Carleton University myself. So uh, definitely uh, Canada is near and dear to my heart and really applaud what, uh, what you all are doing there to promote accessible publishing. So thanks. Thank you, Charles. Um, does anyone else want to speak to kind of the major challenges you you foresee? I did, that, that did, Charles's answer did spark a thought, which is, I, I mean, Charles is talking, I think you talk, you're talking a lot about publishers you've worked with globally in the U.S., uh, and it feels larger scale than like what Lee and I am doing and what a lot of the publishers that you found are, are working with are doing. Um, so it's difficult to say for me personally that it's just like once you add it to the workflow, it's one and done um, and you know how to do it. It, it. it can be difficult to because my workflow isn't automatic. You know, my workflow has a lot of human intervention in it. And I'm sure Lee's does as well. Um, so I'm not perfect. So, you know, we, we do use a much more extensive QC process now, like a quality check process. And we use um, extensive checklists to make sure that we're thinking of absolutely everything. But the challenge is like the human component. And for smaller publishers, you don't necessarily have the resources to automate your workflow. Um, that is something that I try to do at ECW, but, you know, we can only do it to a certain extent. Um, 
but yeah, that's, it is a difficulty that we face uh, is, is the mistakes that I personally can make that, that would then make the book maybe even fail um, an excess of like a certification check because I made one, I missed a, a simple semantic thing that I should have tagged and then that fails WCAG, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, fair enough, definitely. Yeah, small publishers have, uh, you know, don't have the resources to make a automated back end that just uh, you put a, you know, your transcript file in and it comes out with a, you know, near perfect uh, EPUB at the end. That would be the ideal solution, I guess, but we're not we're just yet. out here in the mean streets of InDesign <laughs> and text editors, okay? <laughs> That's, I just to add to that, like there are ways to do it basically for like all the tools I use are for free, but our, I would, I would classify our eBooks as bespoke at this point, <laughs> given the amount of, you know, kind of backend work that goes into them. And we're lucky because we typeset our books in house. A lot of publishers don't even typeset their books in house. So the quality of their design files too um, adds another layer of complexity to that process going forward. Yeah, yeah. Small publishing has its a, a lot of a lot of challenges just in and of itself. Yeah, one, um, one point I would like to make is that for a really small publisher, a brand new publisher that doesn't have any tools available, just using Microsoft Word with Daisy's Word to EPUB. Uh, you, you're right there. You know, you could, yeah, that can create an accessible EPUB if you start with uh, an accessible uh, Word document with any image there that uh, has alt text, et cetera, and uh, tables defined correctly or what have you. But uh, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there as a possibility. Oh, that is an excellent hot tip. Um, well, thank you, everyone. That's kind of the panel session, but we're going to go right into Q&A. And actually, I have a, a I'm going to call her a special guest panelist. We've got Elisa Molinari from LIA, and we're going to go back to the individual file certification question with someone who's in the know. So Elisa, uh, feel free to come on down. Hi, Lia, and good evening or good morning, everyone. I'm Elisa Molinari from uh, Lia, Italy. Specifically, I'm based in Varese, which is a nice city between Milan and the Alps, so you know where I live. And it's a pleasure being here today and listen to your, uh, the work you've been doing on the certification process. I can share that also on this part of the pond, we share the same concerns and we work on the same themes. Uh, for sure, for us as well, awareness and training first are key and are crucial before starting the certification process. As uh, Charles mentioned, we have a title by title certification process. Um, I'd like to share here what our publishers say about it. Uh, we are speaking about Italian publisher, mostly of fiction and nonfiction. And we are glad to have on board both very big Italian publishing groups, as well as very small, sometimes also family owned publishing houses. So we have quite a range of different publishers. And what they tell us that we are really glad about this kind of certification is the fact to have uh, a unique platform where they can send the files and uh, uh, say a, a unique repository and have support on that. So uh, how it happens uh, in just a few words. We receive the files, we run some uh, automatic checks as uh, EPUB check and ACE, and then we devote some time to uh, human checks because many things for sure cannot be checked yet by EPUB check and ACE, like image description for sure. Also the, tag, the tagging as well, because we can detect if the, tag, uh, the tagging is available, but not it's done correctly. So for sure, it's a lot of, it's quite a time consuming activity for sure, in, uh, uh, for sure. Um, one thing which uh, uh, we feel is really important and useful for publisher is the fact that after this certification, we produce accessibility metadata. So publishers are not the ones who produce metadata, but it's LIA, which produces metadata based on the checklist that we have in Onyx. And we send those metadata through the Italian book value chain. This is something which is really important for the communication of availability. And for sure, it will be really important in regards to the accessibility app for sure. Um, so these are the things that I'd like to say about this. Um, as for the process, we feel at the same time it's, it's a really important activity. We do this uh, on, let's say, a consultancy basis rather than a process uh, certification process. So usually, um, uh, right now we are working a lot with uh, textbook, uh, uh, scholastic, and educational publishers, which are uh, for sure have more complex layout books than uh, fiction and nonfiction. So we are working a lot. Uh, 
uh, on uh, uh, workflows for sure. So what we are doing there is to map their current workflows and feature accessibility there before getting to the certification. So this is, those are the areas that we're working on right now. Excellent. Thank you so much for that overview, Lisa. Um, that was really informative. And yeah, I'm glad to learn a little bit more about how it goes there firsthand. Um, do you, I know that Benetech certification, obviously it's paid. I'm just curious, is, do, do publishers pay book by book or for the, yeah, sorry to call you back. I'm just curious. I just I muted myself. Yeah, uh, we have some fees based on the size of the publishers. So big publishers have some fees and small ones have different ones. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for that. Um, do we have any questions from, oh, we've got Isadora raised her hand. So yeah, please come on down. Hi everyone. Um, I would just like to know if you have certified um, companies that are not publishers like aggregators or distributors and what does this company have to do to be certified? I know that you, we're usually talking about making EPUBs, but is there a scenario where some company that does not make EPUBs can work with accessibility, like pushing accessibility and get some sort of cer certification? Um, not on, like there's nothing set up in our program yet for the aggregators or, um, you know, that side of things. We do have a certification uh, pr program for um, conversion vendors that help produce the books. And we, they're basically, once they've gone through the process, they become Benetech approved vendors. And basically we're certifying that they, we know that they can create accessible books, um, but uh, they don't uh, get stamped uh, anything. Uh, as far as the aggregators and, and stuff like that, we, we haven't, I don't believe we've gone that route um, because there's, you know, uh, I think we actually, I sort of take that back. We, we work with like, uh, uh, I forget the name now, shoot, here in the US, um, a big, a big person, a big company that's doing that type of work. And we were trying to get a deal with them to help for uh, pushing certification, um, but then that got sold off someone else or something. So there's a possibility. And uh, definitely if you know of anyone or, or reach out to us and uh, happy to uh, see if there's something that we can make happen. I have a comment to add for this, which is that Bookwire seems, I'm assuming you're talking about Bookwire, Bookwire yes. seems like, you know, your equivalent of our eBound. So maybe what you should be looking at is a similar relationship to Benetech that eBound in Canada has, which either Charles or Elizabeth would be better at explaining that than I am. But um, that, uh, eBound is essentially like, you know, helping the, their, their clients can, are the Canadian publishers to get their certification. So they're acting as sort of the intermediate between Benetech. Um, and Nels has also played a role in that relationship as well. So I don't know if either Elizabeth or Charles wants to add to that. No, that's a great point. We're doing that with other countries as well. Like, uh, I think we have a, a relationship in the Netherlands and, you know, that they'll deal with uh, the native language, um, you know, for checking all text descriptions and we'll help, help train them on that. But then we could actually do uh, the more heavy lifting of the actual structure of the book and other, other standards. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely a possibility. And we could, uh, Michael Johnson would be the person, I think, at Benetech to, to get in touch with or myself, and then I can relate uh, if there's some opportunities here for, for sure. Yeah, you guys can get chatting on Slack. Thank you so much, Ms. Dora. Um, looks like we have a question from Lori Davidson. Lori, come on down. Hey, everyone. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually have two questions and they're sort of unrelated, but if, so I'll, I'll ask one first and then if there's time, I can ask another one. Um, so I think all, all of the certification process, I, I, I think if I'm understanding correctly are all about EPUBs. Is there um, plans for, or a certification process for audiobooks? I know Jessica, you said that ECW of course does audiobooks. And Charles, I don't know, do you, 
is that like can you speak to that I, i'm just curious if it's just epubs when we're talking about uh certification well as, as far like you can put media overlays into an epub and make it an audio book um as well so i don't know if you're specifically talking about like a daisy audio book um but right now uh our certification is for uh, any type of epub book that could have audio in it so in fact we we have checks for uh, audio and video and and the like in in our books um we haven't gone through a certification on and someone that's producing uh, audio books but it doesn't mean that we we couldn't yeah I can add to that, which is to say that I think we would all need to agree on a standard for the audio books, like for audio books yeah. before we could do, I, I mean, I would love to have certified audio books. Um, and usually at the summit, I'm on the, and on the audio book side, um, but there's no audio book side this year. But I mean, Wendy Reed and the, and the working group there have been working and uh, on the audio books specification, but it's not been put into wide use in a retail format um, right now. So I think we all just need to, like in the audiobook space, we really just need to get on the same page. It's like frustrating to talk about this every year over and over again, that no one knows what the best way to make a, an audiobook is and the best way to make it accessible. But um, yeah, step one is just to have interested people like you and I talk about this kind of thing continuously and, and, and having the vendors and, and retailers get on board is really essential. Um, yeah, we, we put a pin in the audiobooks this year because we didn't want to, we felt the conversation might be the same as last year. So <clears throat> we'll pick it up again next year. Maybe when there's, maybe when the BISG uh, best practices come out, that's kind of exciting. Um, Laurie, I know you had a follow up, but Kay has a question. So maybe mm -hmm. we'll go to go Kay ahead and we'll come back when we are at three minutes left. And then, but anyways, hi, Kay. Hi. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Um, so I am um, just with some of the conversation around smaller publishers. I'm working with the Book Publishers Association of Alberta. We have a lot of smaller publishers, like quite small publishers. Um, and it's been really cool to see uh, other smaller publishers doing all of their ebook and accessible production in house. However, there are a lot of people who I work with who don't have that. And I know the best thing to suggest would, would be that they get somebody on board who's able to do their QA more directly, like in-house, um, but a lot of publishers don't have that, uh, those resources right now. So I'm wondering if you have any suggestions for what publishers should do if they don't have the capability of getting into the guts of their eBooks and really looking at all of their tagging um, on their own. Does anybody have a recommendation of what to do? <laughs> Yeah, I can uh, jump in there. Um, I do think that you don't need to have the technical knowledge. Um, the reports that we used uh, for Benetech, it clearly outlined what the changes are. So I think it's just a matter of looking to see, okay, is this in there, whether that's correct or not, you know, they will find out when we come back and say, oh, there's still some minor tweaks here. Um, so it's not necessarily going in and doing the coding, but it's just going in and saying, is there an alt text here, yes or no? Whether that alt text is correct, uh, could go back to the vendor, like they could go back and ask them, like, should it say this? Um, so I do think that they could do some QA without having that deep technical knowledge. And to follow up, I think uh, the free tool like um, uh, Daisy's ACE would be uh, the first starting point because you could run ACE and then you could uh, take a look at that visual report on an HTML web browser and uh, take a look and see what's there, what, what issues, and see the alt text pulled out for you. Thank you, thank you. Um, we're, the room is I closing just, up. Can, I, can okay. I say that that might be an opportunity for future PD? That's all, yes. Nels is doing our SDPPD funded work, our, our government funded work, which is not heritage. We do evaluations for publishers and we will point them towards the Benetech certification, but for publishers who don't know what they're doing at all, we'll, we'll, we'll break it down for them in the most basic terms. So Kay, if you wanna point to anyone, or I can give you the link for the sign up, and then we give like the most friendliest uh, evaluations you could ever hope to get. <laughs> That's what we try to shoot for. I love the link again. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, thanks everyone for coming. I'm going to shut down. So I'll see you back in the in the main room and then we're going to break. But thank you everyone. This has been excellent. Thank right. you.